think some key words in that is connecting our local food communities. The uh, initiated the project really community gardens to start bringing people together to grow healthy food. But in the meantime, I started connecting with groups all around the world, really. You don't do it just here, though, do you? You're in I also, in at the well. time, I was a student yeah. at the U of T, and so I was working around the campus. Mm -hmm. And then I started working around the city, and then working between cities, and then yeah. through the internet, connecting with people all around the world who were doing their similar and related initiatives. And starting the seed library. And then we got into the seed library, because it always comes back to the seed every spring, and the need for seed. Funnily enough, keeps coming up. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. And so people just, their demand is increasing and supply is threatened. And so people are really concerned and passionate about their seeds. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow so, you're going to have a planting session? Yeah, tomorrow we're having a community garden meeting. Oh, good. A particular focus on the really community gardens and the existing gardens and new gardens. And so how are you setting up the gardens? Is it just you doing the work or you have a team coming? No, we have a team. Work on it and a number of the core members are here. Yeah. Um, it's a collective. So it's kind of like a non-hierarchical decision making. Yeah. And uh, we have like social media and a newsletter we send out for events and then we have public meetings where we get people together and make decisions and then whoever shows up makes decisions as to what's planted when and how and, and then the gardens are more like communal gardens where everybody shares in the work and program and produce but we also have share, share in what's being grown too yeah and then we also have allotments too where there's larger spaces available and you rent those out to the community yeah or they're free where is the where is the community garden there's a network, so it's a networked approach. So around the city, and so I would estimate upwards of 20 self-identified community gardens um, within the community, but our collective tends to about half a dozen. Uh, it's a couple at city parks, at Scout Valley on the southwest of Aurelia, and then one behind Brian Orse Arena in a city park, and then there's some behind churches in the south end of town, and three school gardens and yesterday I just talked to one from the school board and they want us to educate like 60 teachers so they can have a garden at every school. And that's what we, that's, that's the idea. Yeah. A lot of people are doing that. Yeah. But the, the food council is really effective because we have like teachers come and we have parents and we have people involved in summer camps and counselors and people from the health unit the food banks and together with a collective voice. Yeah. And so together we can have this collective voice and impact where it's not just like one person or one group going to the school board, it's like the whole community going and saying this is something that's important and let's do it. You need everybody on board. Yeah. And, and, and you, Melissa, uh, you are part of the um, and exactly, I got your email this morning. Oh, good. Yeah, that was a long rambling rant. So, so do you get our newsletter as well? I do. I yeah. did read this morning. Okay, okay. No, so why line. are you here? <laughs> uh, a question, right? Well, just as a farmer, we're here to um, help other folk guide them more on their journey to a sustainable food system because it's great that we grow veggies in the summer but we're still buying vegetables and I know everyone else in town is buying vegetables at the grocery store in the winter if that wasn't available where would you get grocery store? So we may have to make the link between the farmer and the people so we have this food system that in the summer we've got all this lovely produce and then but what do we eat in the winter? Yeah. If we didn't have so grocery stores, what would we be eating? Yeah. Yeah. And, you have, yeah. and you have the meat and... and yeah. tell, tell, tell me a little bit about the, the pigs and the acorns. Oh, our acorn-fed heritage pigs that we run in the forest. Yeah, that's, um, <laughs> it's, it's pretty amazing. They, uh, Nathan's built these amazing huts and pens that they live around. Um, and they, we run them outside 365 days a year. So we use deep litter beddings and um, log cabins, essentially, for the pigs. I think I'll have to come and film all of that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, uh, it's interesting in its own right. Yeah. Well, thank you, Melissa. been farming for five or six years now and we sort of came to the conclusion that you need to scale the food systems up more um, and we've in the last six months or so we've been working on working with a couple of partners to develop local food hub and incubators in communities and develop community farms that basically teach 
young people to farm in an urban environment and then creates a, a food distribution system and uh, connects the community back into this food system. Uh, so that's sort of what we're working. We're working with a few sites down through from Georgina to Innisfil um, and they're all we're testing the models this year and hopefully this is something that will work out in many communities because uh, there's, as you know, there's heaps of empty land space around. There's a lot of young people who could do with good jobs and there's a lot of communities that can do with a lot of local food. Uh, our view, I think, there's an old adage that the uh, best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago or else right now, well, it's the same with the food system. And uh, seeing all these people here together is really positive to see you all motivated to start building a, a strong, robust local food system. Um, you know, from our view, I think most people are probably aware that uh, California's in a drought and our food, mm -hmm. a lot of it's from there and in a year they may not have water and they're not going to be shipping their water over here in foodstuffs. So it's sort of up to us to, as communities to come together and connect and take action before it's too late, before the shipments of crappy salad greens stop coming in. So yeah, that's our, our thing and the Food Council we see here is a really vibrant uh, opportunity to be involved and uh, help shape some policy and action in, in a community. And, uh, yeah. Any questions? Can you just introduce yourself again? Nathan from Tenfold Farms. Oh, from the Tenfold Farms, okay. Tenfold. <laughs> All right. Tenfold. Tenfold Farms. Mm -hmm. um, and what do you do at Tenfold Farm? We do uh, forest pork. We do uh, vegetables, we do education and training. We also have the Georgian Bay Permaculture Institute. Slow, could you <laughs> slow? <laughs> we also, we also uh, run the Georgian Bay Permaculture Institute, which is a training and uh, education on permaculture and sustainable agriculture you models. Do. You do. And we've started a, another distribution system called Georgian Bay Local Foods, which is building a network and connecting local farmers with consumers. Uh, value adding and, and that is all then added to yes. the needs of seeing a local food system and having you know the needs of community kitchens or areas that you can bring larger amounts of foods together to collate to and then you get into your food production and procurement. Right. And you're looking for a community kitchen uh, right now? We're in the model like we're developing community kitchens and we're looking at uh, basically doing asset and resources figuring out what's about. Yeah we've Seen that one. We're actually looking at that one at the moment. Yeah, yeah that, that's a prime opportunity that we're seeing is that there's these sort of sites that uh, could be very useful to you know, develop in every community. And every community needs this sort of thing. Um, Where are you located? We're located in Warbachine. So we're sort of a midpoint between here, Barry, and Midland. And we sort of work with those three communities. And you make the greatest lard. And we make the greatest lard. That's right. <laughs> I've tried that already. Sausages are fantastic. <laughs> uh, we've been farming since 2009. So, uh, yeah. And I'm obviously Australian. I've been farming yeah. for <laughs> generations. But, uh, yeah. um, and you, uh, did I see on your website or your announcement this morning um, about your community? Um, what is it called? Um, community supported agriculture. Community supported yeah. agriculture. So we have a, a CSA. CSA program, CSA. and we have our members or you know, people they invest in us for a season. So they pay a deposit, and then every week they get uh, food, and depending what's in season, and uh, it's been a really good. We've done been doing that since we started, and it's been a really good model to get the community engaged and actually buy into okay. local food instead of just buying one bag of food a week every now and then. They're actually, every week they're getting local food and uh, we've had people that now have been with us since the beginning and they eagerly look forward to it and keep asking us to keep doing it. So we keep doing it. Okay. And, and that's a big model that uh, and it's the community buys in and we get everybody's cares. That makes it local and sustainable and we get to know the farmer who's doing it yep. and, and, and you, uh, relationship organic, and no middleman and, and, and no middleman. There's no middleman, it's, no. there's no <coughs> industrial food systems yeah. sucking half the profits out. Exactly. Right. So you. we've collected all those recommendations and we tried to make a, a short list and focused that short list into a list of recommendations. And much of our time today we'll be talking about what that might, what those recommendations might look like. Um, 
Let me start by just telling a little bit about myself. Um, I have absolutely no expertise in the food system, except for being an, a cooker and eater. Um, but I, my background is in, in training, teaching, coaching, and that sort of thing. Um, so that suits my role here in, in the Food Council. And um, I'm hoping that I expect in this very diverse group that there are lots of people who have marvelous skills that can contribute to the goals of the Food Council. It doesn't necessarily relate directly to growing food or eating food, but has something to do with how we as an organization will be successful. We, we greatly appreciate the tremendous efforts that have been put forth by the members of the Food Council. Very hardworking and enthusiastic group of people. Um, I just jotted down a few notes here, <laughs> uh, so I hope you don't mind. I'm just going to quickly, they're not as uh, arduous as they look, but I didn't want to forget anything. So uh, Louise mentioned the vision of the council and the idea of ongoing projects that provide healthy, secure, and sustainable food for all. And so, of course, we're all interested in making those projects happen. And city council is, is uh, all the councillors are interested in the mayor interested in how we can help and support uh, the goals of the council and the, and the, uh, the vision. Um, so uh, we, uh, I believe that it is probably a little bit overdue that we invite the Aurelia Food Council to uh, a council meeting and uh, they do a deputation, a presentation uh, for us at that meeting. Now that might or might not include a mask. That would be something that we would have to talk about as a, as a council. Um, what we're, we're trying to do here is, we're, uh, I, I think one of our goals is to align the Food Council policies with the, the, the broad priorities of how the, the Aurelia uh, official plan. Right. So that we're not kind of going here and there and everywhere, we're working at it together. So that would be definitely, as a, as a council representative, which I, I, I asked for, I asked to be part of this, and I'm very excited to, to be able to do that, I just provide kind of a, like I think you called it a door, <laughs> uh, two-way communication. Um, I can definitely uh, uh, take the, the concerns and activities of the council to our council, and at the same time, I can hopefully provide a kind of a big picture look at where we're at. You know, maybe uh, for example, financially in our budget, what what is there to support the uh, great many initiatives that are there. Hopefully soon, a committee is uh, struck uh, in that uh, for um, for sustainable communities. Um, that is great because then we get staff resources as well with with that. A committee, our committees meet about one uh, well every month, once a month, and uh, we have some wonderful staff uh, that know every bylaw ever written, uh, ever changed. Uh, they they know uh, the legislation. And so they become part of that committee. Um, um, so uh, it, it, at the same time, it can utilize uh, the, the s very sp specific skill sets and expertise of the members on that committee. Okay, so it's it's a real it's a real plus. Um, there are and and to add to that, there are different <coughs> levels of independence from city council. So it's. Uh, uh, you would have a, pro a council member sitting on that committee as well. Um, with it. So there would be differing levels of uh, control uh, and independence mm -hmm. of that. So It's being called right now, very loosely, a healthy community forum coming up in May or June. Yeah. And so we're hoping that that committee would uh, hopefully be in place by then. I'm just wondering what, what else besides food would be within the purview of that? Well, I, I believe uh, for one, we're looking at uh, transportation. We're looking at housing. Um, Tim, help me out here. Climate issues. Uh, <laughs> not sure as I, I'm not on the committee that's looking at forming that committee, <laughs> that's, and that's looking at um, at the healthy community forum. But it's there. It's out there for sure. 